Python security and community human based in Canberra, Australia. And Caitlin's going to talk to us today about accessing some of your social media data. Go forth. Hello. Great to, great to meet you all. Let me uh, share my slides. There we are. Maybe if I press the share button as well, that would help. There we go. All right. So yeah, my talk is about accessing your social media archives. I've given a similar talk before at Python AU. Uh, but this has been updated for 2020 and it doesn't have the data analysis part. It's also 10 minutes long instead. Um, my name's Caitlin McLeod. Uh, I'm at Kate Alate on everything and I use she, her pronouns. Uh, so I've been on Facebook for mo more than half of my life now and Twitter a bit less. Um, I've got some other parts of my personality that are important as well. I guess I live in Canberra. I use a lot of stickers. I use a lot of reactions. Um, love cats. Um, great. Let's keep going. So when we're talking about social media and the personal data that you're storing on there, there's a lot of information that you don't really think about as being important there. There's who did I interact with? What did I search? Who did I, when did something happen? This is a really useful one for tracking your location history, which is particularly relevant recently with uh, contact tracing in particular. Um, a really important progress in the ability to control your own personal data was the European Union's general data protection regulation that happened in May 2018. And there's huge financial penalties for organizations that don't comply, which is super useful because it means that they have to have implemented these processes so that we can retrieve this data from a lot of big companies. So why, why do we care though? Why do cyber people or cyber adjacent or cyber friendly people care? Um, a lot of companies say that the data they're collecting is just for advertising. Uh, they're making money out of it, right? Like something needs to keep these computers running. Um, but it's not just that. There's a lot of risk management involved in the data that we share and uh, the data that's collected about us online. So we need to be careful about that. There's a lot of sensitive uh, information being stored that we maybe aren't always aware of as we could be. So when we're thinking about downloading and controlling the data that's stored with your different websites, uh, you really want to be careful and respectful. You want to be careful and respectful anyway, generally, right? But this is about other people. A lot of the stuff that you put on there is your interactions, your private messages, your private chats, uh, images that maybe shouldn't be shared or stored in particular places. Um, so you want to be really careful. You don't want to leave this on a USB in a parking lot, for example. So we'll get straight into places that you can download your data from. First off, we've got Facebook. Uh, they've got a really friendly interface for it. Um, really easy to find from the uh, settings and privacy area and uh, a lot of control over the things that you can do. These are a few of the different options that they've got available. So there's accessing your information, which is a friendly use online interface, but you can also download your information there as well. And we're just going to look at a few of the individual areas of information. They've got two different categories here, which is your information and information about you. Your information is things that you've purposely shared with them. So your posts, your messages, uh, your reactions. Uh, in my other version of this talk, I did an analysis of how many times I've love, re love reacted versus liked to comments and pages. And I hadn't done as many love reactions as I thought, which was really honestly distressing. Um, Got to, got to do more loves, I guess. But the other part of stuff in there is the information about you section. So this is stuff that they've figured out about you. But this is really important. It's like they've got some really good logs in there for the security of your account in, in particular. So they've got the IP addresses that you logged in from the locations and how long those login sessions have been active. They've also got this uh, about you section on the top right, which has some fun ones in there. So your friend peer group, um, your address books, and yeah, a few different things in there. Inside the location one, I have my location history turned off, but they still collect my primary location down to my postcode, which is slightly distressing. I'm not sure where they got that from, but it's accurate. Um, the other one in there is ads and businesses. So ads and businesses has ad interest. So like what kinds of things do you generally click on? Advertisers who have particularly uploaded your own contact details and then off Facebook data. Off Facebook data is a new one and it's very interesting. My JSON file for this is 147 kilobytes. 
and 6,500 lines long, which is a lot of uh, just like plain text data in a JSON file. Um, according to the help article that they've put up, it's information shared using Facebook business tools like Login and Pixel. There's a lot of stuff in there that I didn't think was in there, and I'm actually going to be going into the management tools attached to this to figure out if I can stop it. Um, you can delete the information that's already there and prevent them from using it in future. I'm not sure if you can stop them from accepting that information in general. The next one to look at is Twitter data. So Twitter's been in the news recently for changing the mobile data preferences. I'll get to that in a second. But the interface for downloading data and the data that you get out of it is really interesting. Like Twitter's generally used for a lot of data analysis tools, uh, like sentiment analysis and general populist analysis because it's a big public data set. But downloading your own is really interesting. They've also got a few different interesting areas in there, such as the languages that they think I speak. I don't. I only speak English. I don't speak Spanish, Welsh, Tagalog, or French. Or uh, they also have no idea about how old I am. I'm 50, uh, 13 to 54, which is great. Love to be in that age range. Um, they've also got your account access history in there, so you can see which apps have logged into your account. I had uh, if this and that still logging into my account, which I'd stopped using about three years ago. So that was a really interesting thing for me to figure out that I was that was still accessing my account. But the news changes that I ch mentioned recently, the, this week, uh, Twitter changed the data privacy settings that are available on the app. They don't affect the choices available on desktop, but removed all control over uh, the sharing of mobile advertising measurements. The measurements themselves are apparently anonymous, but they get sent to the people running advertisements on the mobile app. They apparently don't have the, your username or something like that, but they, there's no longer any ability to turn that off, which is just a really weird decision to make at the moment. But there's a bunch of other places that you can download this data from, right? Because it's been enforced through the GDPR that you have this right to the portability of your information, and there's huge fines attached for if you, people don't uh, align with that. A lot of these places have done it. LinkedIn is a really interesting one. You can see exactly which contacts you've accidentally shared. Uh, Google, uh, I haven't had a whole chance to go through the, the details of the Google information, but it's really like that would be an interesting place to be because they do rule a lot of people's online lives. So if you want to do computer things with your own data, then I really recommend that you have a look at my original 2018 talk. Um, I went through some pandas and some Jupyter notebooks if you're familiar with Python at all, but also there's some other advice in there about what you can do. And that's all I have, but I can share uh, an Animal Crossing design that I made recently, if in wants me to. <laughs> Oh, I'm not speaking again. Hello. There you go. Yes, you can. I think Animal Crossing is one of the things that people have oh. been uh, distracting themselves with. I think arguably it was one of those things where um, it was a good thing it came out because it kept people inside. You'll need yes. to turn off your, sh your, your, uh, your sharing screen. Oh, you're right. Thank you. There we go. Uh, I made great art of my cat, Mickey. Um, I've made made it shareable on the uh, online uh, crossing settings if you want it. Um, this is what it looks like rendered, but that's all. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Thank you very much, Caitlin.